All right, so remember we've talked about three different types of transformations so far. We've talked about reflections, rotations, and translations. And we talked about that word isometry, where uh, it means that it doesn't change the shape or the size of the object. We're literally just moving it somewhere else in space. Well, we're going to talk today about dilations. And it turns out dilations are not an isometry because... They are not an isometry because they actually do change the size of your object. The shape of it maintains its um, proportions. So you can see this just looks like the same exact triangle, just made bigger. And uh, we can prove at some point that all these angles are the same. Uh, but really, a dilation does change the size of it. It makes it bigger. So the dilation is either the enlargement or reduction of a figure. And we actually know how big or how small we're going to do it by something called the scale factor. And the scale factor has a variable of k, and we just call it k. It's one of those math things. And so if k is bigger than 1, then the dilation is an enlargement. In other words, some examples would be 3, 5, five halves, uh, ten thirds, any of those are bigger than one. Those numbers are all larger than one. So any of those would make your shape bigger. Now if k is less than one, it's going to be a reduction. And so some examples of that would be one fourth, one half, two thirds, any of those numbers. Or any number that is anywhere in between zero and one on the number line is going to make it a smaller shape, which makes sense. So let's take a look at some examples. So here's a triangle and we're going to do a k factor of two, a scale factor of two, which means it's going to be an enlargement. We know that because two is larger than one. So it follows that rule up there. So remember you can write a shape as a matrix. Any shape can be a matrix. So every shape, when you write it as a matrix, every column represents one of the vertices or one of the points on the shape. And then the top row is the x values for that and the bottom row is the y values. So r is at negative 5, 1, so the x goes up here and the y goes down here. s is at negative 3, 4, and t is at 2, negative 1. So when we're going to do a dilation, it's just as easy as multiplying every single one of these points by the scale factor. Now, if we have it written as a matrix, it's even easier because that is just a scalar multiplication problem on the outside of that matrix. And you know how to do this. Remember, when we do a scalar multiplier, a scale, <laughs> scalar multiplication of a uh, of a matrix, it's like you distribute in. So this two gets multiplied by every single number and we're gonna spit out a matrix that's got R prime, S prime, and T prime. The X values are gonna be on top, the Y values are gonna be on bottom. Well, two times negative five gives us negative 10. Two times one gives us two. Two times negative three gives us negative six. And we get eight down there, we get four there, and we get negative two there. So these are our new points. For r prime, we have negative 10, 2. For s prime, we have negative 6, 8. And for t prime, we have 4, negative 2. Now all we have to do is graph this. So let's go to negative 10, 2. That's r prime. Uh, negative 6, 8. S prime, and then we have 4, negative 2, and that's T prime. Then we'll go ahead and use any straight edge you happen to have around. You know, birthday card envelope works just fine for that. There you go, there's our new image. So remember the uh, red is our image, the pencil is our pre-image, and that's it, we just dilated that shape. All right, let's take a look at the other one. So this one's gonna be a reduction. So let's take a look at this one. This is a rhombus, 
I already have it drawn here. So let's write this as a matrix with J, K, L, and M. Each of those is going to get their own column. So J is negative 10, 2, K is negative 2, 8, L is 6, 2, and M is negative 2, negative 4. And this time we're going to have a scale factor of 1 half. So remember what that means if you have a number that's in between 0 and 1 on the number line, then it's going to be a reduction. So this is going to make the rhombus smaller. So we're going to take 1 half and we're just going to multiply that by our matrix and see what we get. Well, 1 half times negative 10 is negative 5. 1 half times 2 is 1. 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. 1 half times 8 is 4. 1 half times 6 is 3. 1 half times 2 is 1. 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. And 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2. Basically, we just divided every number in there by 2. So here's our new j, j prime, negative 5, 1. k prime is negative 1, 4. L prime is 3, 1, and M prime is negative 1, negative 2. So let's graph those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There is J prime. There's K prime. There's L prime. and M prime. Go ahead and connect all of those dots. And you'll see, and we knew this, we predicted this already, that it is smaller than our pre-image. So our pre-image and our image, uh, we saw that this is a reduction because K is less than 1. So that is how you do dilations. It's that simple.